Welcome to the Clarinet Pedagogue Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Karen Andreas Bronson. Today's podcast is sponsored by Virtual Clarinet Camp. Visit virtualclarinetcamp.com to check out our amazing camps for middle school and high school students. Today's guest in episode two of the Clarinet Pedagogue is clarinetist, teacher, and composer, Dr. Kristen Denny Chambers. She teaches students of all ages in the Tulsa, Oklahoma area, and has performed as a freelance chamber and orchestral clarinetist with Wyoming Symphony, Longmont Symphony, Colorado Light Opera, and the Tulsa Symphony. Dr. Denny Chambers has published two clarinet books, Prep Steps Before You Crepsh, written in 2016, and her recently released book, Finger Fitness Etudes. This book incorporates finger technique drills into tuneful and lighthearted technical etudes. Composed in 2020 during the COVID-19 pandemic, the etudes showcase a new compositional voice that was simply waiting for the right moment for inspiration. With a purposeful goal of inclusion, Finger Fitness Etudes is meant for clarinet and all auxiliary clarinets with a special section devoted to bass clarinet. Kristen has an impressive and informative pedagogical website, clarinetplayground.com, where everyone is invited. She has plans for four additional books, which are expected to be completed over the next three years. So Kristen, welcome to the podcast and thank you for being our guest today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm excited to talk about everything that's that you're working on. Before we talk about your book, though, um, I'd like to know more about you. Tell me about your life there in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, it's pretty busy. <laughs> I have two kids, so I have a three-year-old and a four-and-a-half-year-old, and I'm pretty much home with them during the day. Um, and my husband's an instrument repairman. He works during the day at the shop. When he comes home, I teach lessons, so we just trade roles so if I want to get anything done, I have to get up really, really early. So when I was writing uh, Finger Fitness Etudes, I was getting up about 5 a.m. And I could work until 9 when we would trade shifts again with me oh watching my, this. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And and so you wrote this during this pandemic, this time when we're, we're mainly home. So, uh, so did it take you uh, this whole time, like, about six months to write it? Or how long did it take for you to write it? I started writing it in January, so before really anything hit. Um, And then when the pandemic hit, my husband actually didn't work for seven weeks. So I really worked hard during that time. So that was like mid-March through most of April. Um, And then when he went back to work, I still had that momentum going. So I would just get up really early and, and just keep pushing through. Wow, that's awesome. So that's great that you took advantage of this time. Um, most of us uh, didn't, we're not that productive during this, so I admire you for being really productive. Um, so um, tell me about um, teaching clarinet. So you, you teach there in the Tulsa area. What do you like about uh, teaching clarinet? What's, what are your favorite things you like? Well, the clarinet is my favorite instrument, so I'm definitely biased. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but I really like teaching in general. There's something about Um, having a skill and then sharing that skill with someone else and they start to learn it and little sparks start to fly. Um, And I I think that's very satisfying. I also think it's important to have the role of a mentor. Um, You know, a lot of, I I teach mostly high school kids and they're in such a big transition part of their life. You know, they're finishing high school. They're trying to figure out what they're going to do after high school. So I develop pretty close bonds with my students and help them not only just with clarinet, but with with, uh, making decisions about what to do after high school. Yeah, yeah, I agreed. That's, that's, (laughs) you know, if I answered the question, it would be uh, answered very much the same way. I feel the the same way. I I love working with with students. And um, I work with a lot of students from sixth grade through um, 12th grade. So I get to, to see them develop as as people and start setting goals. And then you have to send them off. It's always hard when they go off to college. Um, so that's, that's hard, hard. But at least you, you uh, sounds like you continue a relationship with them after that. 
Um, so that's, that's, I think, really important. It's, it's important for high school students to just know that there's someone that's invested in them, you know? Um, and I, I always tell the people too, um, I, I just teach life skills and I happen to do it through music. So it yeah. sounds like you're <laughs> kind of the same, the same way. So you wrote this book, Finger Fitness Etudes. I want to know more about that book and I want to know about your inspiration behind writing that book. Well, I had written Prep Steps Before You Crepsh when I was pregnant with my first child. I had a little bit of extra time at that point in my life to work on it. And then kid number two came and life was just a little crazy for a while, but things started to calm down again and I wanted to get back to writing. So, um, you know, uh, Prep Steps Before You Crepsh is more of an exercise book. It was really my first way to get my feet wet in doing this kind of stuff. And then I thought, okay, I really want to write music. So actually, before I wrote Finger Fitness Etudes, I was experimenting with writing some clarinet solos, and I have about nine or ten solos written. But then I tried to write the piano parts and was totally stumped. So I've just never written for piano. And I kind of put all that stuff away and I was like, okay, I need to stick with just the clarinet by itself <laughs> for right. me to be able to do this. So um, I, uh, the idea of doing finger drills into etudes just hit me like a train because I, I use finger drills with my students to help them, you know, improve their finger technique and they play them, you know, with some reluctance, but they do it. Yeah. I wanted to try to make that more fun. So right. it gets really boring when they're just <laughs> doing that one after another. And yeah. I, what I like about, um, about your concept is taking those drills and applying them to something, because it's one thing if you can do the drill, but if you can't apply it to something, what's the purpose of it? So I, I love that that concept of applying it to an etude and then making it fun. Like, it's yeah. like, okay, we worked really hard on this drill. Now we're gonna do something fun with it. <laughs> so that's, that's great. So you had a lot of people that um, endorsed your your book you had michelle zukowski julianne kirk doyle jenny mcclay and trevor stewart um and i think you had some other people that were um instrumental in uh helping you uh with this book and putting it together who are some other people that helped you out with this and how did they help you well my first helper was connie rhodes when i first started writing the book I sent her one etude at a time. So I just emailed her, hey, play this etude and let me know what you think about it. I think I'm going to start writing a book. Yeah. And so I would email them to her one at a time and she would play them and email me back with some feedback. So she was kind of my early person that was on board from the very beginning. And of course, my students were helping too. So they would play them in lessons um, and especially whatever etude was dedicated to them, they really took very personally and they would practice those too. Um, other people, let's see, you mentioned Michelle. Michelle's my primary editor. So she came on board late in the project, played through every single etude, gave me some very thorough notes and was very involved in some editing um, and adding some like practice ideas and pointers on the pages and things like that. Um, Good. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's great. That's great that you had um, people that endorsed it and also people that that helped you uh, put this together. And it's always great to get feedback from students as well. So yay to those students that uh, that helped you with that. Um, all right. So tell me uh, about the book. Uh, it, is it designed for a certain age group or a certain ability level? Who's the book designed for? Initially, I was thinking you know, upper level high school into undergrad level. That's kind of the target I'm generally going for with my materials. But as I started going through it and playing it more, you know, I'm getting stumped. And yeah. uh, Michael Lowenstern was another one of my readers and he's made a couple of really nice videos about the book and he kind of jokes around like, these got me stumped, you know, I got totally twisted in some of these. So really anybody can get anything out of these. Um, the fast etudes are written in cut time so a younger student can look at that and they're not intimidated, but um, a more advanced student can just fly. And then, then the challenge gets really hard. Wow, yeah, that's great. So um, yeah, so it sounds like it's 
for teachers as much as it is for, for students. Yeah. Although we're all students, even teachers, are students. <laughs> we're all studying, right? So I, a, a lot of times with my students, I'm like, okay, here's what I'm working on, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so we're, we're, all, uh, we're all students, doesn't matter. We're all learning, so awesome. Well, I looked through your book and I just think it's brilliant. I love, uh, I love the, the different styles that you have of these different etudes. And I really love the titles and the titles go along with the styles so well. Uh, so some of my favorite titles of your etudes are Jalapenos on the Side, Ants <laughs> on Strike, Dungeon Hop, Baker's Blues, the storm is brewing. I bet you got that ins inspiration living in Oklahoma. <laughs> There's lots of storms and stuff. A storm is brewing. And my personal favorite is May the Forks Be With You. <laughs> I knew your inspiration behind that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was great. What about some some of these? Did you have certain ones that stood out that... Um, that were more meaningful to you or you had special inspiration on on them or any titles that really um were inspiring well um i just kind of think through here the desert impasse um was dedicated to a former student of mine akash mittal who's actually in new york now composing and playing he plays saxophone pri primarily but um, he's from India, so it has a very, it's in um, harmonic minor, so it's a nice nod to him and his background. And he writes, uh, I think, mostly jazz music with Indian influence, which oh, is really interesting. That's awesome. So I, as I thought of the student, it also kind of helped inspire the music. Sometimes I would sit and think of a student and be like, okay, I want this one to be for this student. What do I know about this student? And that would inspire the tune. And sometimes it would go the opposite way where I would write the tune and then I'd be like, oh, this is just like so-and-so. And then oh, I would just match wow. that student to the music. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, and I love that you um, you dedicated all of these to different people. And I was thinking that they were maybe your students. Um, and I love that. That makes it really personal. And, um, and uh, you know, that's, that's, just, that's just great. Um, Another one that I want to mention is uh, Jaden's Journey. So I had a student here in Tulsa and she had to move uh, to, where did she move? Oh, she moved to Oregon. And it was so sad because, you know, we were right before some major um, solo time for competition and she just had to suddenly move. And so that one, it feels like you're in the car, you're, you know, you're driving and it's kind of this tumultuous melody where you don't know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. Um, so that one was for her. Oh, what a great tribute then that to your, <laughs> your student. Oh, that's and each great. one really has a story behind it and I could talk all day about it. So great. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Well, maybe we'll do some side stories on stuff like that, but that's awesome. So there were two of these, uh, etudes that have composers uh, in their title, The Copeland's Conflict and Osborne Again. I know where you got Osborne Again from, from the Osborne Rhapsody, the, the well-known uh, clarinet solo. Um, tell me about that and tell me about Copeland's Conflict and the inspiration behind those. Well, Osborne Again, uh, dedicated to a student of mine that was in Nebraska, Monica, Monica Johnson Smith, um, but her Smith is new, of course, her married name. Okay. She was a music minor, and at her final jury, she was playing the Osborne Rhapsody, and as a surprise to me, she had memorized it and performed it memorized, and it was a total shock, and I was like on the edge of my seat the whole time. I was like, oh my gosh, I hope she can play it memorized. But she did it beautifully. <laughs> But I stole basically the introduction to that and then the other one of the other motives and just kind of built on that to create that etude. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it starts out with sounding like the Osborne Rhapsody. I love the, the beginning of it. Um, that's awesome. Tell me about Copeland's Conflict. So Copeland's Conflict um, the actual melodies in there are original, but it just has the feel of Copeland's music. So we've got this sort of racing uh, scale leading to this very rhythmic um, melody. And I guess 
you know what? I have to backtrack. I guess that part of the rhythmic melody comes from the uh, the concerto. So you'll hear yeah. little bits of that rhythm sneaking in, but then there's a slow section that's, that feels very much like you're on the prairie, you know, and that brings another sort of um, Americana feeling that Copeland likes to do. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So what I like about this is, is um, uh, maybe, you know, if, if someone has students that are working on those solos, they can work on these etudes to get the style um, and to, you know, to, to, to work on something that's like one page. Also, all your etudes, I believe, are just one page long, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, so that's really awesome. So this can be something like a supplemental uh, piece to work on when they're working on those, those solos. I think um, just to capture the style, I think that's really great. So you have recordings that go along with these books. Is it you playing through all of these recordings or do you have anyone else playing on these? Well, currently, I, I've i recorded the 38 etudes on B-flat clarinet. Um, I just used my home studio garage band and my Blue Yeti microphone. Um, so it's just a $5 little cost to get all 38 etudes for study purposes or whatever else you need. Let's listen to excerpts from these etudes. The first one I'm going to play is from Osborne again, and the second excerpt is from Copeland's Conflict. That was an excerpt from Osborne again. Now let's listen to an excerpt of Copeland's Conflict. Watson, who helped uh, a lot with the bass clarinet section, and she's mentioned on the book, of course, she's going to be working on recording the entire book on bass clarinet. So the first 38, as well as the 10 at the end that go to low C, she'll be recording all, all of those. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. I love that that this is uh, appropriate for all the auxiliary instruments, too. Um, wonderful. Okay, so how can people uh, find this, the Finger Fitness Etudes book and the recordings? Where can they go to purchase these? Uh, everything right now is on my website store at clarinetplayground.com. Uh, it's pretty easy to find and navigate through, but if you have questions, of course, you can contact me. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, I just wanted to thank you again, Kristen, for, for being my guest on the Clarinet Pedagogue. And I look forward to doing another uh, podcast when you come out with your next book. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited about more to come. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Clarinet Pedagogue Podcast the podcast that is dedicated to discussing how teachers can improve the skills that will maximize their students' potential. This is your host, Dr. Karen Andreas Bronson, reminding you to take advantage of the teaching resources available at clarinetplayground.com.
Also, visit our website for information about this episode and much more at karenbronson.com slash podcast.